So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about automation and AI efficiencies uh, in verification uh, that we're seeing in Tesla. Uh, myself and Marmik Sony are both working on this. Um, and we, we've actually got some good results and a lot of the work is still in progress. But um, we just wanted to give you some ideas of what you could also be doing yourselves. Um, so if we look at the verification flow uh, and where we think AI could be applied and, and oh, oh, we're not just thinking about um ai here we're just thinking about automation as well you've seen um already from the two speakers you can get a lot just by automation uh, but we think we can get more by also applying artificial intelligence or machine learning also in the automation so uh with the very flow going across the top um, let's just say we start with requirements and specification. Typically at Tesol, the first thing we would want to do is a feature extraction and come up with a list of features, the main features that we're going to try and verify. Based on those features, we can then generate a coverage plan. Um, and uh, once we have that coverage plan, uh, we can build our test bench, build some agents, you know, generate some tests or and sequences as well. Um, Build, put, add some constraints and, and, and generate coverage data. So that's a just you know an, an outline of a, a verification flow that we would use. Of um, hopefully that people recognise that as the main components of such a verification flow. Okay. Then, uh, so where could we um, where could we play AI? So you can see there that we've done some feature extraction. We're doing some coverage planning. Uh, we're doing some test bench generation. Uh, some UVC generation as well for the agents to go into that test bench, test generation, constraint generation, and then the coverage data is going to come from simulation uh, and, and, and debug. And we really, what we want to do is <clears throat> try and get coverage closure. Uh, and coverage closure may feed back into some of those earlier stages. So where do we think we can uh, automate this or add AI into this process? And certainly at the beginning, um, in the feature extraction and the coverage planning, um, we've been using large language models and, uh, and generative AI to see how much of that we can, we, we can uh, automate. Um, we think on the test bench generation uh, and the UVC generation, the test generation, the moment we're trying to we're mainly use an automation script around that. Um, we, uh, we think it's a bit of a stretch for the large language models we've seen so far to generate good uh, UVM code. Uh, so we're, we're building automation scripts for that. And maybe in the future we can apply some more AI there. Um, but at the moment we think the uh, uh, automation scripts are best. Um, on the constraints, we again see good application of uh, Gen AI and large language models for that. Um, and then on the um, on the final one there, I'm trying to get coverage closure. We we think there's a potential for quite a number of uh, machine learning techniques there. And we've had some previous talks from DV Club and also at our Verification Futures Conference on, on, on various machine learning techniques. So the, I'm going to go through this now and um, some of these details uh, in the next 10 minutes or so. Okay. So um, what we've done uh, as a proof of concept, and we've, we've actually applied this to a lot more complex complex designs than just the FIFO, but we took the Xilinx synchronous FIFO version 3.0. That's just a, um, an industry available um, specification, so it wasn't anything special. Um, we took the PDF, so it's a PDF document, um, and we used a large language model um, to do our feature extraction on that um, and what we got was a, just by feeding the PDF into a large language model we got the um, the list of all the IO there um, whether it's an input or an output the signal name uh, and the description uh, for example on the DI, uh, DI, DIN at the beginning there so data input we've got write enable signal so that was extracted automatically um, that table of IO and then we started to generate features um, so data read and write operations verify that data presented at the, 
at the data input port is, cur is currently written into the FIFA okay um, so we started to generate our feature extraction based on that um, again that's just feeding a PDF into a, a, a large language model we have um, we took pre-trained uh, large language models and then we train we trained them uh, a little bit further uh, on on how to do feature extraction on the on the specification. Um, okay, so that worked well. Uh, and as I say, we've applied that to more complex designs, customer designs, which we can't really talk about. So the FIFO is a generic one which we can talk about. Okay. Um, we also generated some um, test benches. Uh, again, just all we did was feed in the PDF uh, on our pre-trained um uh gen ai bot um so we can we can we could easily generate uh, a directed test bench and you can see here this is not particularly sophisticated um, but it does show you that you know that you can actually generate that 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 type of test bench nice and easily um again without much effort and without much pre-training on the ai model um but what we obviously want to do is try to train our models to 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 help us generate aspects of that of that UVM environment. So um, what we did do uh, is generate some assertions. You can see there we generated and it, it realized that empty and full couldn't both be there at the same time couldn't both be high at the same time so it generated that assertion for us um and we also generated this cover point here uh, or this coverage model actually i should say um so um so we identified those control signals and it, it wanted to put the um, uh, cover points on those you can see also some cross data coverage points here as well um okay so um uh, all of this was automatically generated nothing by hand um again just by inputting that pdf so our, 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 the models are getting fairly good at generating some specific aspects of the uvm environment uh, we don't we can't get it to generate a full uvm environment at the moment we use automation for that um and this is a um this is something that we did on one of our customer designs so a lot of this has to be obscured but again it was just a pdf specification we, we extracted all of the um register details um uh, and the functionality of those registers uh, and what this can now do is go on to start building um the coverage models um uh, and our RAL um, model as well. Um, so that's all been generated from that input PDF. Um, I won't go into the details here. It's just that we can generate this type of information now. Um, and now we're more talking more about um, how we uh, generate these um, UVM environments. As I said, at the moment, um, we're not trying to use AI to generate the UVM environment. That's that's too much. At the moment, we've we've written some Python scripts to do this, um, and uh, what we what we say is that these are the files that we want to generate. All the files for the, again just on the Firefox at the moment, so nothing too complicated. We're doing this as proof of concept, but we have started to apply this for some uh, uh, customer designs as well um so these are the these are the uvm files that we were, were asking the python to generate on our behalf all we do is input some uh the dut details for example the dut interface uh and identify what the control and data signals are now that's that's pretty you can start to see that possibly that from some of our previous um ai results we could actually start generating this input automatically as well and that's what we're, that's what we'll do we'll link up our ai to this python script so that we can actually try and do a near, a near full automation and also some of the interface protocols that the obvious ones are axi 
Um, but on that FIFO, it's just very simple. Um, if if the read signal, the write signal is high, then the data going in is valid. So you, you can specify in in the in the to the Python in that input to the Python just to say these are just some of the basic protocols I'm working with, or this is an AXI interface. It will start to generate those agents for you accordingly. Oh, sorry, that was a wrong button to push. Um, and um, we are generating from this um, quite a lot of code now. So we are, so we've actually generated a full FIFO uh, UVM compliant um, test bench with all, with all these files that I mentioned there. And that and that works first time. So, um, that, and now we're, we're trying to extend our Python. It's, it, it's a little bit of a challenge to make it generic enough to, to, to generate any um, UVM environment based on any design, but that's our goal. So we can actually fully generate uh, a complete test bench with all of this now. Um, and uh, within the, for the last few minutes, I just want to talk about how we start to apply machine learning to some to coverage closure. So if we start here, um, we've got a test bench. We typically apply constraints. We get a set of stimulus, which are applied to the DUT, and we get coverage out of that. So what we want to do is put machine learning into that process. Um, and uh, what we're looking at is specifically what set of constraints does the test bench have and what sort of stimulus did it generate. Um, and we put that into our machine learning um, uh, and then the, we, we get the coverage from that simulation and that's sort of its score. That's a score for that stimulus or the, the score for that set of constraints. And what we're trying to do based on that score and that feedback process is uh, update the test bed either to improve the constraints or improve the stimulus and to see if we can actually start to close coverage. Um, it's a little bit more sophisticated than, than this diagram implies, but that's what we're trying to do. Um, and um, what we're finding is, is um, uh, something like constraints is by far the better thing to work with um, because by applying constraints to the test bed, you, you, you're, you're sort of one removed because if you can up, if you can generate stimulus, then then you'll get much closer to the the um, uh, you, you're one less removed from just generating constraints. But the, the advantage of uh, basing it on constraints inside the test bench is the test bench knows how to generate valid stimulus. So it, it, it knows what it can do and what it can't do, what the protocols are, so it will generate valid um, AXI access, for example, or a valid transaction. And you can't always necessarily, the machine learning may not learn that quickly enough about what is a valid stimulus, what's invalid stimulus, or legal and illegal. So but we think there's more uh, mileage in the constraints and so we're trying to learn how to uh, generate constraints. What we're also finding is also we can get very detailed feedback from the functional coverage model and the code coverage model. We feed that in and the more detail we get there the better. Um, and we're starting with GA. Yeah, GA seems to be a very good way of doing this. Uh, genetic algorithm for that. Um, so these are some of the um, cost savings we're getting. Um, I won't go through this in detail here, but you can see at the top there the summary is that um, roughly uh, we've got about 85% uh, effort saving. And, and also that, that also feeds into a reduced time scales and quicker time to market. So we are getting significant, um, you know, all, an order of magnitude of saving here. Um, okay. Um, and some of the practicalities um, we found is that on the LLM, you do need expertise in the DUT, but also we're finding we, we have a few now good experts on large language models and Gen AI. Um, and similarly for coverage closure as well. We do need large data sets um, of clean unbiased data, uh, and we, we're learning how to build those as well. Security, we we thought it was going to be an aspect, um, but um, we we can either use the cloud to learn build these models. But if we've also um, 
pulled some of those large language models in-house as well onto our own servers just to make them more secure. Okay. Um, so we are finding AI ML will, is changing the way we're going to do verification chatbots a good way to perform some basic tasks. Um, and we are starting to apply ML. Um, EDA are adding it under the hood, but we prefer to try and make it explicit for ourselves. Uh, we want to look at AI for debug in the future as well. We've had, again, we've had a DV club on that. Um, and, and that's, and we see from a cadence solution. Okay, so I've come to the end of my time. Uh, if there's any questions, we'll answer those offline. Um, so uh, thank you for your time. And I will just finish off the meeting with our closing slides. Um, quickly. Okay. Um, can you see that, Disha? Uh, yeah. Okay. Let me get to the beginning. Yeah. So thank you for your participation today. Um, the presentations, the both the slides and the recordings for the three talks today will be available on our website there. Um, if you've got any ideas or suggestions for preferred topics, send them to me. We do listen. Quite a few of our DV clubs this year have been built on suggestions. Um, actually, I think probably I think we had about six DV clubs this year, and five of them were based on suggestions. So we do listen. Um, these are the important dates. Everything's next year now, so. Um, they're the dates for DV Club. You'll be sent an email on this. We do have Verification Futures. Uh, that is a physical event as well as online. That's going to be in the UK in Reading uh, in June, the 18th of June. We're returning to the university. It seemed to be a very good venue for last year. So we're returning there. And finally, just a thank you to everybody. Uh, our sponsors, Agnesis, Brecker, Cadence, Synopsis, Impress, uh, Arm and ST, and Tessov. And uh, thank you very much for attending. Thank you. Thank you, Disha. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, and a big thank you to our two speakers today as well, Nikita and Simon. Thank you. Hey, thanks very much. Bye. -bye. Thank Bye. you. Thank you.